So, um, hello, can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Great. I can hear you also. Very nice. Um, so let's uh, wait for a few minutes more. So maybe uh, a few more people join and then we start. Or maybe some of you have um, some questions regarding yesterday. I'm a little curious about the um, kind of the goal of the global meetings during the boot camp because yesterday it seemed like just kind of random stuff like the uh, just a little CAD overview and some lab introductions but I guess we're gonna do CAD at some point in the future locally. Yeah, um, I agree. It's quite kind of random and it's supposed to be like that. Um, so a year ago when I was planning this course, uh, so there was no idea of the student bootcamp. So it was supposed to be the project management week uh, anyhow. So this week uh, for the course, we need to focus on um, on developing the documentation website and the CAD design, as you already said, it's going to be a, a part of the digital um, of the computer aided design week. But that's that's just going to be the introduction to CAD design because you will um, you you're, you'll be supposed to use CAD uh, throughout the course, anyways. Uh, did it answer your question? Yeah, I guess so. I'm just is there a list of all the topics for the week? for the global lectures? Yes, you can find that on the uh, on the website. Let me share the screen. Um, and uh, here you go. If you go to fabacademy.org and you go to content and then 2021 and then you click on schedule. Oh, there's a student bootcamp only. Okay, so there's also no link. It's a rather complicated link. Yeah, here's the schedule, but um, I'm going to share this link with you through the My Courses page, and um, I'm going to I'm going to add um, I'm going to add a link. Uh, I'll also, send it out to my email because uh, yeah, if you can see the the link over here, um, that's good, uh, but you know, it's quite complicated. So I'm just gonna, maybe I'm just gonna copy and paste it in the chat. So wait a second. Where is the chat? Okay, this one. Yeah, that's perfect. Thank you. Okay, now we are 10 people. I think we're ready to start. Let's. Okay, so today um, we're going to have a short lecture about uh, command line and Git basics. I hope that uh, at least some of you started to experiment with the HTML websites. So some of you who have more experience, they maybe have a website already there. So we're going to build on top of the things that we started to do yesterday and uh, add the flow of command line and Git version control to it. As an overview, uh, overview for today, so I'm going to just briefly touch the history of 
uh, of command line and Git. And then I'm going to mostly talk about uh, setup, not mostly, but more about setup. And then mostly about, uh, I'm going to show how to actually use it in the context. So I will show the workflow of how you can use what you have together with, uh, with the terminal uh, commands, with the basic terminal commands that would be good for you to learn. And uh, also uh, Git version control. There's somebody who is joining. Hello, Solomon. And uh, about the history, so command line. Uh, so where does command line come from? Um, so it's this, uh, if you don't know what I'm talking about, it's this uh, scary window for, for some of you. Um, and probably you, you think you're never going to get it, but um, it's, it's, not that, it's not that hard, believe me. Uh, so that's why we are having these small lectures in order to get you comfortable with it. So this is a terminal application on, uh, on the Ubuntu operating system. And uh, you probably have seen it as a Mac OS user. And uh, there is one on, on Windows as well. Um, so yeah, this comes from the first teleprinters or teletype writers uh, or TTYs in the early days. Uh, so these in turn come from the telegraph. So it, it originates from the need um, to transfer messages overseas uh, over long distances from person to person, from team to team in the old days. Uh, and initially, yeah, it was used in telegraphy around uh, 1840s. And then it became computer terminals. Uh, so to enter commands into the computer and then also see what, what the computer responds. So to make calculations, but also basically like mainly to, for sending messages and then also to uh, get output from the computer in terms of calculations. So you enter numbers and some data and then you get an output. Uh, so here, that's, that's already like an advanced version um, of, of, of terminal, which is called the intelligent terminal. So it's, it has a, like the, the thing about command line, it has a really dense history. And uh, I'm actually very interested. I would like to really dig deeper into the topic, but uh, uh, yeah, this is just, uh, this is not to be supposed like a really history lesson about terminals, but just just an introduction to what we are going to do practically. Um, and this is like an advanced version, but initially it was basically a um, typewriter or a printer connected to a keyboard. So instead of a computer display, you would uh, you would see the output in, in terms of uh, lines of characters printed out on paper. And imagine. Um, Imagine that to be able to chat like this for a few days in a, in a single room and what amount of paper that could potentially create, what amount of used paper uh, like piles of A4 sheets or I don't know, rolls of paper that could potentially create. So yeah, um, smart terminals, intelligent terminals. And nowadays we have shells, um, so the Classic uh, is the Unix shell, and then from there, all the other shells uh, developed. Um, so born, born shell, which introduced uh, scripting cap capabilities, which basically made uh, the terminal to become sort of um, a little programming language or scripting language, so you could automate tasks. And then there's corn shell among many others in between. And then somebody revisited the born shell and called it born again shell uh, or bash. It used to be the the main the main shell on on macOS systems, and uh, it's still the default on most of the Unix distributions that I know for at, at least. And Z shell is uh, kind of a born again um, shell uh, advanced, uh, so it includes uh, all kinds of nice features uh, like that you can share history between many. Uh, before, before, between sessions that you had in the past, uh, 
So it's much easier to work with a shell because you don't uh, have to remember all the commands necessarily. You just type the first letters and, and then you can browse the history based on these first letters of the command. And then in combination of all my Z shell, uh, you can make your terminal to look like, uh, like in the hacker movies. Um, and Z shell is now default in Mac OS, but in order to get it to look like in, in the hacker movies, you need to install all my Z shell. So actually this, this is already equipped with all my Z shell so that I have here on the desktop. Um, if, it, if it doesn't look like in the hacker movie yet, then uh, there are many more customization options and uh, you're welcome to check those out on the all my Z shell website. And then there's Git. Um, which is um, version control, um, version control software that we are going to use through the command line terminal. So there are alternative uh, options. So you can uh, you can use Git also by using um, graphical user interface, but it is recommended to dive deep into the terminal and explore the possibilities of command line during this course because it's uh, one of the shortest paths towards becoming an expert computer user, which is going to prove very useful if you, if you want to continue doing something with uh, computer aided design and uh, complicated matters in, in the future. So, and Git uh, was created by Linus Torvalds um, uh, in 2005. And the main motivation behind that was to actually support the versioning of Linux kernel development. So before that, uh, he and his team was using BitKeeper. And uh, then there was a clash about licensing. So there was also the community partly didn't like it because it was proprietary and the company was not happy because some of the users tried to actually reverse engineer it. And then, and then Linus just uh, created a set of rules uh, for himself and for, for the team. So what, what the new versioning system should be like. And they made a, a new version control system uh, called Git. And it was revolutionary in a way. It was really very much different uh, from anything that was available on the market, market back then. Uh, it was somehow similar to BitKeeper, but better. So and now if you know a little bit about web development and uh, software development in general, you will you'll probably learn that Git is kind of the de, de facto um, default in terms of version management. And that's why uh, yeah, we're gonna take it as our main version control system. And um, yeah, so in order to use Git on command line on terminal, you will need to uh, use the terminal application um, on your operating system. So for Linux and Mac OS, it is easy um, because the application that you're gonna use, it's called terminal. Um, so in Linux, uh, you probably can find the icon of the terminal very easily. If not, then you can press the Windows icon and uh, type in terminal and it should uh, open. And then on Mac OS, you probably have the spotlight shortcut, which activates when you're pressing the command space uh, key combination. And then you get this little search bar on the top of the screen and you type in terminal and it's gonna open for you uh, a terminal instance. And on Windows, uh, it has its default uh, command line interface, which is very much different from what you have on Linux, uh, Linux and Mac OS, since these are Unix based systems. But in order to make it uh, more consistent, um, I recommend to install you a command line uh, emulator, which is called uh, Commander. Could I have a question? Yes. Um, but yesterday you talk about this, this, you say we can use something like Nano. Oh, like that's a text editor within the command line. Um, <clears throat> so if you, so command line, command line is uh, the user environment before there was a graphical user interface. Mm -hmm. And Nano is one of the programs that you can run in, in this text-based or command line uh, graphical, uh, in command line user interface, so which is more mostly basically text-based user interface. Mm -hmm. So 
because I'm using a Mac, for example, when I open a terminal and I can just use it easily, I don't really need a, like the GNU Nano, Nano right? No, in the, when you open terminal on Mac and you type in Nano, uh, mm -hmm. let's see. So here, um, this right. is, assume this is very, pretty much the same as the Mac OS terminal. Yeah. So when you type Nano, it's opening mm -hmm. the text editor. So this is how the Nano text editor looks like. Oh. Um, okay. So you can also start like a HTML document with it. Wow. And in order to save, uh, you have to hit um, Control X mm -hmm. and it's gonna ask whether you wanna save it and you hit Y and then uh, you type the file name. And it's saved it somewhere here. So you see there's test HTML over here. Um, and then you can call Firefox and test HTML. And it's gonna open it up. Wow. Uh, yeah, so I haven't found yet the best way how to explain um, what command line interface actually is. It's usually, it's this, is this um, edge of the, of the cliff uh, for us who have grown up with the graphical user interfaces. Mm -hmm. And not all software is translated into graphical user interface software. So because it's much, much easier and faster to create software that runs in the text-based environment. And sometimes it's just, it's just so simple and trivial uh, that it doesn't need a graphical user interface and the developers, they do not have enough time in order to, uh, to add this graphical user interface layer. So that, which means that uh, if you stick to terminal, then you can find all kinds of interesting things uh, that can make your life easier. So all kinds of interesting software that you wouldn't be able to find and discover otherwise. Mm. Uh, so ba ba basically Nano at this point is like helping you to be more clear in a terminal to know what to no. do. No, nope. it's just um, <laughs> it's because uh, yeah, it's the text. It's a, imagine it as a text editor for the for the for the text based interface. Because for example, yeah. uh, if you use SSH, mm -hmm. um, you can log in into other devices. So here I have an example. For example, what you use in order to log into your Raspberry Pi, which is connected to the same network. Um, mm -hmm where your computer is, or um, you can connect to, so for example, I can connect to my web server just like this. And when you connect to it, um, then, so now I'm on a different computer basically, but I cannot mm -hmm. use that other computer uh, with a graphical user interface. And yeah. uh, and this is why I need to use anything that is available via terminal. And uh, if I want to edit, for example, this readme file that you see there, I need to use nano. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I'm just, this is like a hacker movie. So you are oh. very, you can quickly uh, connect to other computers and you can edit files there. Um, and nobody really sees you doing anything on a graphical computer screen or whatsoever. So everything happens through the, through the cables. Mm, okay, sorry, I missed one point. When you type in the nano readme and the thing it, it's up here, which means, uh, mean, means what? Ah, so, okay, I'm gonna go back here. So connected yeah. to the server again. Uh, yeah. So when you type nano, so nano, mm -hmm. so usually in command line, uh, you start with the actual command or program that you want to run. And okay. then uh, you add a space. And after that space, you can add arguments. And usually for text editors, the first argument is the file name that you want to open. Mm -hmm. So before, so this ls means list. So you can list uh, files which are in the current directory. 
Um, mm -hmm. And PWD can show you which is the current directory. So this, uh, I'm, I'm gonna, basically this session is about that. I'm gonna explain you how to use command line, but these are the basic commands. So um, PWD tells you where you are um, because you can view one directory. Uh, you can be in one directory at, this, uh, at, at the same time. And mm -hmm. LS is, uh, stands for list. You can list files in it. So you list and then you yes. see that there's a readme file. And then yeah. you want to open it up and edit. So you use the nano text editor. So there are other editors as well. Mm -hmm. And you enter the file name, which in, is this case is, uh, in this case is plain readme. Ah, okay. And then it opens up in this um, interface, which is, uh, which is I think from the, from the many text editors uh, that are on command line. So that I also talked about yesterday. This is the closest as, um, as you can get to the graphical user interface. So you see there's um, a cursor. You cannot really move this cursor by using mouse, but you mm -hmm. can move this only by using the uh, keyboard uh, arrow keys. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can go somewhere here and add a text. So um, <laughs> so for somebody else who might log into the server and examine that file, uh, Mm -hmm. And then on the bottom, you can see sh shortcuts or more like a cheat sheet, uh, which shows you what uh, commands you, uh, what keyboard shortcuts you need to use in order to do specific things. So you see if you hit control, so this, um, this um, Chavron, um, or like I, I forgot the name of this character. So it means control. So control mm -hmm. G means help, uh, control X means exit. If you want to save the file, it means the right output. So it's then the control O, you have to press control O. Um, okay. There's even find functionality. So for example, if you hit control W, mm -hmm. you can search for something in the text and it's gonna bring you to the first uh, occurrence of it. And uh, you can hit it again and it's gonna go forward. Mm. It's kind of con like we, con control F. Um, yeah, control F function. And uh, yeah, so you can just look at the, at the shortcuts on the bottom and this is how you can get to a certain functionality. So when you ever um, end up here and you want to, you don't know how to get out, just uh, make sure that you carefully read, read the, the uh, reference, so the cheat sheet on the, on the bottom of the, of the editor okay. and in order to exit. So what I usually do is I hit control X and it is gonna ask you save modified butter, buffer. Um, mm -hmm. And you can hit Y for yes. Uh, and then it's gonna ask you do, you, do you want to write it in the, in the same file as, as, it, as before, in this case, read me. And here mm -hmm. you just have to hit enter like so. Oh. Okay. Now I'm gonna just go back to where I was and then I can um, clear the screen like so. Let's see what, um, I think I didn't have uh, too many slides left still. Okay. But yeah, in order I to- I have a question. Sure. <clears throat> go on. Yeah, you quite neutrally uh, uh, told us that if you, as I have Windows, so that we should uh, use uh, the commander so is it uh, is it a must or no? It's you said uh, you just to make things it. consistent. Um, so that, because I'm mostly going to work uh, with with the commands that are uh, that are used on Unix systems. Um, so if you want to make your life easier in terms of following those, then it would be better to use uh, Commander, or you can also download Git Bash. Um, and use that uh, to version control your website. Um, but the commander, it's a full blown uh, terminal emulator and you'll be able to reuse all the commands that we are going to use during the course uh, in there. Okay, yeah. So, um, and uh, we are here, uh, so demo time. Uh, I will start out with the files from yesterday, so I have it here, demo. Yeah, so these two files, electronics PNG and index HTML. Um, 
And on Linux, you can open this folder in the in the file browser. You can right click and you can open it in terminal. Uh, it's not the case in in other systems. Uh, so on, on Mac, what you can do is that you can type CD, which stands for change directory, and then you can drag the location in here. Ah, yeah, you can you can do it also in, in, in Linux. And then it's going to change the working directory to the same directory, which is open in the file browser, like here. And uh, here in Z shell, um, you will also see where you are. But uh, so if you if you just have a plain shell, then you can find out where you are by typing this pwd command like this. Um, print it, it stands for print working directory, and then it's ls, which stands for list. And you can, so ls is sort of a, it's a program already, and you can also give arguments to it. So you can uh, add a dash and uh, L, and uh, when you hit enter, it's gonna show you the files in the directory as, um, as, a, as a list. And you will see other parameters, uh, like who is the, who is the creator, um, uh, what's the group, of the creator uh, in the in the user system um, and when it was created and so on. So far, so good. Um, then, if you add another variable uh, a, it's gonna show all files. Um, and in this list, you can see that there's dot and double dot. So these uh, entries actually have meanings. So these are. These are uh, apparent in every directory when you're using terminal and dot means that it's the current directory. So when you, for example, you type change directory dot, it's actually gonna end up in the same directory. So it's, uh, we are still here. But for example, if you type CD and double dot, so double dot means that it's going to, uh, it's going to bring you uh, to a directory which is one level above. So you go to CD double dot, and then you type PWD, and you will see that you're on the desktop. Now I'm going to change the directory to demo again. Clear the screen. And yeah, let's go with plain LS. And uh, uh, a second. So the PWD means the exact location where you are right now, right? Yeah, it's gonna output. So uh, these these short like these basic commands, what they are doing. So when you are running them, um, they gonna do something in the background, and they gonna print out um, text afterwards, like as an output. So you see, okay. in this case, it's like home, Chris, desktop, demo. Okay. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> and now I'm. Uh, going to call Atom, which is uh, already like a graphical user interface software. I'm, in this case, I'm not gonna use Nano, just to simplify things. And I'm gonna specify this dot uh, so that Atom knows which directory to open as a project. So I hit this and I get that. And there are obviously too many things open here. And the Zoom interface is a bit annoying. Doesn't allow to access these. And I'm gonna open up this index.html file over here. And I'm gonna close the project pane. So this is where we were yesterday in terms of uh, the website. And uh, what I would like to do with this one is to, to create a version control snapshot as the initial initial version of my website. Um, and uh, I can also open it as a page. So this is how it looks like. And uh, once you have Git installed, um, you can test that by typing Git and version. It's gonna output you the version of your Git installation. 
Um, yeah, on Linux, you can install it by issuing sudo apt install git. But on Windows, I actually recommend you to use homebrew. As you see, it's like the, the missing package manager for Mac, Mac OS because basically it, it doesn't have a decent package manager and this solves the, the issue. So on Mac OS for Mac users, install homebrew in order to um, and then install git. And uh, how you install it, you need to copy this string of letters into your terminal. And um, if you have problem with that, just let me know. Um, uh, send me an email. And there, there are also videos about that on the Alto Fab Lab YouTube channel. Okay, but uh, let's get back to this one and to terminal. So yeah, uh, once Git is installed, you'll be able to call uh, Git and check, check its version. And while being in the directory where you have your files, you have to initialize a repository and that you can go with Git in it. And as you see, it tells you that it initialized the empty Git repository in home Chris desktop demo dot Git, uh, which is directory. If you just uh, run plain list files, you will see that there's nothing there. But if you list with a, a flag, it will show you that there is a Git directory. And uh, by using CD, you can actually move in there. That's not required for you to do, but just for just for the sake uh, of demonstration, I can show you. So when you move in, you see that there's all this uh, all these files in there, which are basically Git configuration and history files. So this is all the all these files um, and directories. It's it's sort of a system um, which allows you to version control. So now I moved back to the demo directory. One thing that you will need to do with Git is also to uh, configure some basics. Um, um, and the main things that you will need to configure is, is, your, is your name and email. So this is the command that you would use for um, setting your name, so username. Uh, I'm not gonna change my name to this one at the moment. Uh, and then this is the command that you would use in order to change your email. And this, uh, this part is important because it's going to map uh, your name and your email to every commit you make. So imagine if you are collaborating on a project and there are several people making changes to the same project, you, you want to identify them. Uh, how it happens, I will show you shortly. So um, we have our Git repository. And um, the first thing that you always do whenever you start working on this Git repository is to check on its status. So you type git status and it's gonna tell you what's going on. So on branch master, uh, you can rename the branch to something else. Um, that's the latest trend. So I think GitHub remained their all master branches to main. Not the case with uh, GitLab yet. And uh, you can see that Git is telling you that there are some files that are not tracked. So in this case, it's an uh, electronics PNG image and index HTML files. So these are usually read. And as you see, it also guides you a little bit. So it, it tells you nothing added to commit, but untracked files present and use git add to track. So what does it mean? So you can use git add and then the file name. So in command line, it's also 
that you can start typing out a, a file name and it's gonna, and then you can hit tab and it's gonna autocomplete. So what this does, it's gonna add the file like electronics PNG to a so-called uh, staging area. And when you type get status afterwards, you will see that um, there's a new file that is added to the staging area. So that's why it's Git is telling you that use Git RM uh, to unstage uh, because it's the file is in the staging area. And what that means is that it's sort of a clipboard or, uh, or a shelf or where you put things. It's kind of, if, if you imagine that you have a folder, you open the folder, you put things in, um, in order to later close it and then store it in a shelf, in a bookshelf. So that's this folder. So you're putting, you're assembling the things in this folder right now. And you can add, add another file, like another file in this index.html, for example, and then type git status to see what's going on. You'll see that there are now two files in this staging area. And once you are ready to actually put them in back into the shelf and add some message to it that uh, this, these two files or these two changes are because of this or that. Uh, so you can use git commit command. And usually you want to add a message, the dash M flag, and then in quotes, you add a message to it. So in, in our case, it's just gonna be the initial commit. Like so. And Git tells you that two files changed. Um, there are 35 insertions, which are, which is basically the number of lines that we inserted. So here you see there are 35 lines. And uh, yes, yeah, some modes for, for the files uh, so that they are, so these modes are then being mirrored on other operating systems when you check, uh, check the repository out. And now when you type, when you type git status, you'll see that on branch master, nothing to commit. Uh, okay, you can rename that. Um, I can talk about that another time. Mm, so git status. So nothing to commit, uh, working uh, tree clean, but so you want to look up um, the history of, of, the, of the commits of your project. And that is being done by using git log command. And here you see there's only one entry for now. So with that, with a commit uh, identifier. So all of this is uh, the commit identifier. Then you can see the author and date when it was done and also the message. And what you do next is, for example, you want to change something. So you want to start from scratch. So this is something that you do not really like. You want to change the website to a better structure. Um, And uh, so I'm going to save this and I want to see what Git thinks about that. And it thinks that there is something that is not modified that should be probably be tracked. Uh, so you see Git detects whenever a file in your project uh, has undergone any changes and it sees that index.html has changed. In order to register that change, we can get add that index file here. And we can get commit. And we can call this commit as the clean state. So um, and as you see, so there's, uh, it tells us that one file has changed. There are 11 insertions and 35 deletions. So which means that we deleted 35 lines and we inserted 11. Um, and what are you gonna do next? We're gonna make a bit more sophisticated structure for the website. So we're gonna add, no, not head. We're gonna add a header. So these are really nice uh, semantic HTML5 elements. Um, 
which you can use in order to make a better structure of your website because most of the websites they have a header then they have a navigation then they have the main part for the content and they have a footer so let's do something with those so in the header usually we will have a um, title of the page and um, maybe a short description. And uh, yeah, we can save at this point and check what Git thinks about it. And another interesting thing is that you sometimes might want to do is that let's say you are working on a file for a longer while and you changed a lot and then you really do not remember what, what did you change and you would like to describe it. So you can type git diff in order to show you the differences what have been made. So in this case, git shows you that there, there have been things that are added And for example, if you remove something and you save and then you type git diff, it's gonna show you also which of the lines have been removed. And in our case, I just want to register the change uh, that we added a header. like so. And if I type git log, I can see that we have three commits now already. So this is uh, going to prove um, itself useful once you progress in the course, and uh, especially when you start collaborating on someone in the, in the git repository. So for now, I just recommend you to follow along and get, uh, get comfortable with this one. Uh, let's continue. So in the navigation bar, I'm going to make it as a list um, with several sections starting from home. So which is going to be always the link to the home page. Then I'm going to have about section and a page about our final project. And then we'll, we are going to have a nested list nested because we are going to put a list, an unordered list into a list. Mm, hello, Chris. Yes. Uh, I want to ask a question is about like, when we not follow reading well with what you do like step by step, should we ask right away or should we later watch the video and have a question to email to you? Later, you so like? because this later. is a short session and we will basically jump right into the, uh, into the global session. So okay. you are not required to follow now. It's more like if you have some really critical questions right now, if you don't, do not understand, so just, just shoot, uh, just ask. Okay, yeah, okay, I see. I can ask later. Um, yeah. So, yeah. and then, then we have principles. I'm gonna add like just a three placeholder links over here. So I'm not, not gonna populate, populate all the list. And then just after that, we're gonna dive into the uh, secrets of computer aided design. Like so. Um, so we can type git diff to see what we changed. And uh, we can also go to Firefox. In order to see how it looks like. So you see we added a nested list over here. So we can register the change.
Okay. Um, and then in the main section, I'm going to add a table with a row and with two columns. I'm pressing Control, Shift, and D in order to duplicate the line. And what I'm going to do here, I'm going to add an image. And a short description. So these are going to be like bigger representations of the assignment weak links. And here I'm just going to add two for now. Like so. And if we go to Firefox, you see it's going to display a table with invisible borders with these things side by side. And uh, let's register that as a comment. And let's deal with a footer. So a footer is the right place where you can put the information about your copyright and also the license that you're going to use. Um, I, I recommend you to read on, on creative uh, commons licenses early on. So, but for now you can put, so this is a HTML special character, a character that's gonna stand for a copyright symbol. And you usually add your name and the year. It's going to look like this. Next, we want to add some links. Um, so we would like to add a link to the home page which is basically the same page that we are on, or basically the index page. So, and we want to add a link to about page. So you need to wrap these uh, names of the sections into these anchor tags in here. Uh, the problem that you will notice is when you click on the about link, it's going to complain, Firefox is going to complain, the browser that you're using is going to complain that file is not found. Uh, how to, okay. <clears throat> and uh, in order for the browser to be able to find this file, we need to create this file. And here we'll need, uh, so we can create this file by using the Atom uh, editor, of course, but I want to show you a few commands that would will allow you to create the file from terminal. So remember that we are in this demo folder so that you can find out by typing pwd and then if you're not, you can use CD uh, in order to navigate around and uh, enter directories. And you can use the touch program or the touch command in order to create files with specific file names. Uh, it's initially, its original use is to actually change the timestamp um, of the file. But if the file doesn't exist, then it just creates the file. And uh, 
see that it appears also here and it's empty. Uh, what we will need to do is to copy all the content from the index file and copy it in here. And we're just going to add a different name. We change it to about. And we're going to leave the header in the same structure. And uh, we're going to leave the navigation as it is. And in the main part, I'm going to add a paragraph of text. And also for the footer, we are going to use the same. Uh, later in the following days, I'm going to show how to use a um, static website generator, which is going to give you an opportunity to define these as modules and reuse them so you don't have to copy them in the individual files. Now with the about page in place, we can check how it's going to look like. So when you click on about, you see everything changes. So you can switch between these two sections. Uh, you should do the same with the final project page and also the individual assignments pages. Um, so there's not much time left. So I wanted to sh still show you a few tricks with the CSS and JavaScript. Uh, but I think this was, I think, complex enough if you're a complete beginner, so you can watch this video. And also, by the way, um, it was a good thing that I didn't record the, the lecture yesterday because it, there was, it was an opportunity to share the video from last year, which is sort of a, the full thing of what we are going to do this week. It's kind of compressed. So if you want to learn how to set up a, a website from scratch, then that video actually contains all, all the things. So if you want to, if you want to kind of remember um, more, if you want to see what, what we did today, you can watch this video, uh, but on top, I also recommend you to watch the other one and several other videos that were also mentioned in the slides in order to better understand what's going on. Uh, do you have some last questions at this point? So um, the email is the only way to 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 contact you, right? Or no, it's not prefer? the only way. Um, yeah, if you go to people.alta.fi, you can also find my phone number there. But ah, okay. I would prefer I would prefer email because uh, uh, I cannot be like online all all day all day long. So email sure. and then also on my courses. Uh, let's try to use these tools that are available there. So there's a little user forum. It might be that if you ask a question there, others might have the same question, but they wouldn't realize that they actually want to ask it. Uh, so it would, be, it, would, it, would, it would work as a frequently asked questions section. So actually that's, that's the best place where to ask questions. Okay, cool. Just checking last time about to who is there and who is not we have a one minute break <laughs> yeah sorry about that okay uh, so let's finish this um uh, and see you in the global meeting and tomorrow bye thanks chris bye.